Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate you about the human brain. You can see here it is an intact brain. And these are the two cerebral hemispheres. In between there's a gap. This is a medial longitudinal fissure and it lodges the fox cerebri. And deep below you can see the two cerebral hemispheres are connected and that's by the corpus callosum, the broadest band of commutative fibers find the two cerebral hemispheres. And posteriorly and inferiorly, you're finding is a mini brain, the cerebellum. And this, you know, the entire thing weighs around uh, 1.5 or 1.4 kg in males and around uh, 1200 to 1300 grams in females. How the mini brain weighs around 200 to 250 grams in, right? And the ratio, the weight, if you compare the weight, the ratio. So this is 1 is to 8, the ratio of weight between cerebellum and cerebrum. And on the inferior surface, you can see this one is the brain stem, the medulla, the pons, and deep down is the brain, midbrain. But now, I'll tell you more about it, but later on, first, first cover with the, let's cover up the meninges. Here you see is, a, you know, a fold of a fibrous, hold a cap like thing which covers the sorry, the brain from all the sides right and it lies the inside of the cranial vault that's called calvarium mean, inside of the brain box and that's calvarium so you know and there are two more layers inside to this dura matter one is the arachnoid and then the deep most is the Pia matter. Pia matter, you can see here that pia matter is actually you know, running, I mean, it's sticking uh, like teeth to the cerebral cortex and in fact to all the structures beneath also. So that pia matter is a thin, pia, you know, fibrous type, um, you know, thin and vascular layer. It even has two layers, the pia matter. Pia matter has the, uh, you know, epipia and pia glia. The pia glia is that one, you know, Pia glia, these are the sulci. So the pia glia actually goes within the sulci. Remember visceral pleura, visceral pericardium. So just like that, even this one is a, a pia matter, right? Goes inside the sulci. While the epipia actually, epipia is one which is running onto the surface and it is anchoring these vessels. These vessels you can see, these are the cerebral vessels running onto this and they are anchored to the epipia. Now, if above to this pia matter is another layer in between dura matter and pia matter. The another layer in between is the arachnoid matter, and that one is the uh, you know trabeculated layer, and that is a translucent layer. And in between, you know, arachnoid and pia matter is the subarachnoid space filled with CSF, and that lodges the you know the cerebral vessels. Now. <clears throat> Uh, above to this arachnoid is the dura matter. So the space between dura matter and arachnoid is called subdural space. And what is the content of subdural space? Normally it's a potential space, but at, you know, this dura gets folded in within itself. So to form the different folds, so there are dural venous sinuses. So at places where the dural venous sinuses, the subdural space is traversed by there are peduncles of cavernous uh, peduncles of arachnoid villi and granulations and the emissary veins. Now, after covering it with this thickest layer, by the way, the inner two layers, you know, the arachnoid and pia matter, they are called the leptomeninges. They are thin layers. And this one is a packy meninges. This is a thick layer, and it is made up of dense, fibrous, irregular connective tissue. Now, above to the dura matter, you know this surface, which is lining the endocranium, from you know, which is forming the endocranium, or the inside of the cranial vault. The space below is called the epidural space. Now, in the epidural space, you will find these meningeal vessels. Can you see here? These are the vessels running onto the surface of the dura matter and these are the meningeal vessels, right? And remember that it's a, a pain sensitive structure. These, you know, meningeal vessels, they carry the pain sensitive fibers 
and they even leave an impression if you see the cranial vault of an adult human uh, then inside of the cranial vault you will find those streaks of you know impressions about these meningeal vessels and especially if they ask like uh, about you know which meningeal vessels vein or artery then the impressions are basically because of the veins because veins are more uh, approximated to the inside of the cranial vault anyway so now let's look here in the dura matter so this dura matter you know it's normally like a thick layer fatty manage but at certain places uh, let's say there are four there are four folds uh, of dura matter where it splits into two layers the outer layer you know is the anostial layer but at certain places you can see that it gets folded on itself to form folds and those are the meningeal layer of the dura matter so one of the folds of dura matter you can see here is in midline this is in the median longitudinal sagittal plane this is a sickly shaped fold here this is the fox cerebri I, I believe you can see this this is the fox cerebri this fox cerebri is a sickly shaped fold and it goes within this median longitudinal fissure like this right and on its upper attached margin at its upper attached margin here it lodges the superior sagittal sinus and on its inner free margin and its inner free margin it lodges another sinus that is inferior sagittal sinus and can you see this horizontal fold of dura right this is the horizontal fold of dura and this is the tentorium cerebelli this tentorium cerebelli you can see if it goes like this right and it covers it it actually this tentorium cerebelli it's this space here it's here the tentorium cerebelli reaches down and it forms a tent right between the occipital lobes of the brain and the cerebellum and that forms in that divides the posterior cavity of the cranium into supratentorial and infratentorial compartments. The infratentorial compartment is called the posterior cranial fossa. Okay, then other folds you, you can see. I mean, you know, there's another fold, but it's not visible very much. It, this one is a thin fold. This is the fox cerebelli, right? This is the fox cerebelli. That fox cerebelli actually runs here in between the two lobes of the cerebellum the two halves of the cerebellum and that's fox cerebelli and another one which actually must have been distorted uh, you know that that's actually in the floor of the cranium and that formed the diaphragma cilia so those were the good folds of the dura matter and these folds actually lodges the you know dural venous sinuses you can see on the two sides these are the transverse sinus and even you can see on the surface they have a dark, you know dark outer appearance this you can see here is the superior sagittal sinus right even on the outer surface you can see the bluish tinge because it lodges the venous blood inside and very important thing can you see that superior sagittal sinus at this point that is like you know the internal occipital protuberance at this point and you can see that the superior sagittal sinus actually winds and continues as the right transverse sinus right while this you know inferior sagittal uh, sorry the you know the straight sinus and the occipital sinus they together continue and form the left transverse sinus and this is you can see is the impression of the sigmoid sinus in the two sides this is sigmoid sinus okay so uh, yes so this is about the dura i mean more of the things i will tell in my lectures but you know what it's like the termination it's like i'm cutting the entire sinus and don't forget that it reaches beyond this foramen magnum it, and it you know lines the spinal cord as, as well what is the lowest level that this dura reaches into the vertebral canal it reaches to the lower border of s2 vertebrae okay so, and you know, spinal cord terminates at lower border of L1. So, lower border of L1, the lower border of S2, that is the space that is filled with CSF, and that is the lumbar, you know, that is the uh, fifth, uh, oh, sorry, that's lumbar system. Yes, that's a lumbar system, which is the common site for lumbar puncture and draining, for, draining of CSF. So, this is a pain sensitive structure. Remember the intracranial pain sensitive structures I taught you. One of them is the dura matter, the meningeal vessels, and the cranial vessels, cerebral vessels. All of them are pain sensitive. So that was about the meninges.